Welcome everyone to today's virtual event due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the restrictions that they've imposed on the gatherings. I'm Lou Esposito, Mayor Rossi's executive assistant. And today marks the 35th annual celebration from the West Haven Black Coalition and the city of West Haven, celebrating the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Jr. Dr. King led his life with the goal of advancing civil rights for African Americans and ending racism in our nation. His efforts of civil disobedience, such as the Montgomery boys, bus boycotts and the Selma to Montgomery marches, exemplified his belief for nonviolent protest, inspired by his Christian faith in the work of Mahatma Gandhi. Gathering here today, we join West Haven and our nation in honoring the mission of Dr. King. We also look forward to next year's celebration and hoping we could return to our normal in-person events. I would like to introduce the Reverend Carl Howard, who will deliver the invocation. Reverend Howard. Our God, we thank you for your loving kindness and for your grace. We thank you for your spirit being upon us, Lord. We thank you that this is the day that you have made and that we will rejoice and be glad in this day. We thank you for giving us the privilege and the honor to celebrate the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As we lift our hearts up this day, Lord, let us continue, Lord, to just move in the spirit of Dr. King as we attempt to work with each other, Lord, let unity be that thing that glues us together. Let our hearts give praise to your glory and to your goodness. So Lord, we bless you this day. We pray that all that will hear the message and all of the information that will be conveyed this day, that it will be done for your glory and that you will be glorified in all that we do. We thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone. We will now have remarks from West Haven Mayor Nancy Rossi. Mayor Rossi. Thank you, Lou. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us virtually today to celebrate the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King was hugely influential in the American Civil Rights Movement and was a major advocate of nonviolent activism in the struggle to end all forms of racial discrimination under U.S. law. Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. Dr. King most famously gave his I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial during the peaceful March on Washington demonstration in 1963. His words have become known as one of the greatest speeches ever delivered in American history. Dr. King's speech called for economic equity and an end to racism in the United States. Contemporary activists are still fighting for economic equity and an end to racism today, almost 58 years after Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Although almost 58 years have passed, there is still much work to be done in our nation and in our own community. Recently, the city of West Haven passed a resolution declaring racism a public health crisis. It is clear that the message and the memory of Dr. King is still strong in West Haven. Martin Luther King Day is also known as a day on, not a day off, and is the only federal holiday des designated as a national day of service to encourage all Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. As a public official, my duty is to continually work on improving our community, and I encourage all residents of West Haven to find ways to serve our city and your neighbors. This includes ending all forms of racism and being an ally to those who still experience discrimination and economic inequality. 
In the words of Dr. King, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mary Rossi. We will now have a presentation from Ashley James, who is singing the Black National Anthem. Ashley. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the glistening sky. Let it resound loud as the roar and sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Thank you very much, Ashley. Next, we will have comments from uh, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Senator Blumenthal. Hi, I'm Richard Blumenthal, your United States Senator. So proud and excited to join you for this Martin Luther King celebration. I want to thank particularly Mayor Rossi and the town of West Haven, of course, the West Haven Black Coalition for their continued dedication to honoring the legacy and memory of Dr. Martin Luther King. This moment has special significance for us now because that movement that he helped to ignite has to be about more than just a moment. We're in the midst of a pandemic and a economic crisis, but we're also going through a racial justice movement. And it was precipitated by the killing of innocent young black people. But it has to be about more than just justice in policing. Because we know injustice, racial, systematic injustice exists in housing, where redlining continues, in education, where the quality of a young person's school can often depend on their zip code in the workplace where there's still discrimination and in healthcare where the disparate impact of this pandemic means that communities of color suffer twice or more the death rates as others. We have to continue the fight. Martin Luther King was a man of nonviolence and peaceful protest. He received the Nobel Peace Prize but he was also a fighter. We need to renew our dedication to the fight. I know that everyone who is watching and listening here has that commitment. And we must all remind ourselves that the moral arc of history bends toward justice. We must be part of that fight for racial justice and justice for all, regardless of any of the characteristics that are commonly topics of discrimination. Thank you so much for your fight, and I pledge to continue with you. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. 
Next, we will have comments from Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz. Susan. I'm Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz. It is with great enthusiasm that I offer you greetings in celebration of the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The West Haven Black Coalition, the City of West Haven, and of course, Carol E. Brown have always been at the forefront of change, serving as leaders in the fight for justice and equal rights. Your commitment to political involvement and awareness, educational and economic development, and physical and mental health is very consistent with the priorities of our administration, particularly with respect to the work of the Governor's Council on Women and Girls, for which I serve as co-chair. Without a doubt, certain moments in history have sparked an outcry loud enough, not only to create awareness, but also to effectuate change. Moments such as seeing the brutalized body of Emmett Till at his open casket funeral in 1955, and just months later, Rosa Parks refusing to give up her seat on the bus. Or as recent as this past, as this past year, the reckless acts that led to the death of Breonna Taylor, followed just months later by the unconscionable murder of George Floyd, sparking marches across our state the country and the globe in support of Black Lives Matter. It is also without a doubt that leaders like the late Representative John Lewis spearheaded long-term movements over the span of several decades, movements that created shifts in society and changed the way of thinking for millions of Americans. This past year, we celebrated the centennial of women's suffrage, a significant movement but women of color were not given the right to vote until decades later with the passage of the Civil Rights Act. And now in just a couple of days, we will celebrate the first woman, a woman of color, Senator Kamala Harris, being sworn in to one of the two highest executive offices in this country. We don't reach this milestone without over a hundred years of civil rights moments and movements for women and people of color. With persistent effort and an unwavering commitment to educate and lead, change happens. Governor Lamont and I remain persistent and unwavering in our commitment to advancing equal rights. This past year, we faced the unfortunate reminder that systemic issues continue to disproportionately impact some more than others. Communities of color were more affected by COVID-19 all while facing the harsh realities that the officers sworn to protect and serve are sometimes the greatest threat to their health and safety. Here in Connecticut, we convened a special legislative session to address some of these issues and passed a police reform bill. But we recognize that our work is far from over. We understand that the issues faced by our communities of color require continued attention and action, and we are prepared to stay the course. We are grateful to have you as our partners. Um, we are so pleased that you are engaged in having these important conversations and advocating for change and creating solutions. Thank you for your service and solidarity. And of course, happy Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thank you so much. We will next hear from our seventh district councilwoman, Renee Tre Trine McGee, sorry. Uh, who will give remarks on behalf of the City Council. Today we join together in memory, action, and duty to commemorate one of the greatest warriors to go before our nation's podium becoming a megaphone for the re revolution, Dr. Martin Luther King. As we arise to the occasion as a community, as a state, as a nation, we cannot do so without being reminded of the lives dedicated to the most significant movement in our nation's history, the civil rights movement led by Dr. King and many integral figures before us. A fighter and a father, patient yet passionate, humble yet hungry, sharp yet sensible, let us in dignity take on the full strength God has given us to fight like Dr. King. We are a mosaic of deeply pigmented pain covered 
by the celebration of, tr of cultures with valiant customs and historical traditions, at what point have we here today allowed ourselves to be overshadowed by a dissonance convincing us that we don't believe the same? That although we're near images of the same yet God yet look different, that you deserve to be treated better than me or her or him or any of us. But are we really? Are we the same image? Do you see your image in mine and mine in yours? What would Dr. King say today and in what ways have we brought honor to the memory through his dream? I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. What is your dream? Where are your actions? What is your commitment? How is your commitment to make your dream and action going to impact this nation? One that is deeply divided, severely wounded, excessively bleeding and longing for healing. This nation, land of the free and home of the brave, but when I leave my home, all I better be is brave because the fear I sometimes feel is mistaken by a threat and can get me killed. This land was made for you and me, but you and me don't even agree that my life matters. If we speak to the strength of a dream, we give credence to our heart's commitment to accomplish that dream. That means we ourselves must be accountable and responsible to actions moving forward. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Where do you stand? Thank you. Thank you, Trine. Very moving. Thanks. We'll now have remarks from a retired police chief from City of New Haven, Anthony Campbell. Chief Campbell. We all know that Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream. And I've heard it said by those who knew him that he was a fiery minister, and yet he could put anyone at ease. This week, as we celebrate what would have been his 92nd birthday, I think that we can all learn from his balance of passion mixed with the ability to put others at ease. Recently, we have witnessed the horrors of injustice in the form of the loss of the lives of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, just as Martin Luther King Jr. witnessed the horrors of his day in the deaths of Emmett Till and Medgar Evers. Our resolve to see justice must never waver. This is what keeps Dr. Dream, Dr. King's dream alive. Dr. King was quoted as saying that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere and that the time is always right to do what is right. In less than one week, we will all witness the inauguration of the first black woman to take the oath of office for the position of Vice President for the United States of America. This is only possible because of Dr. King's dream. Despite many setbacks, the dream which Martin Luther King Jr. had is alive and well. It takes shape as time passes. The arc of the universe does indeed bend towards justice. Lastly, I leave you with these powerful words by Dr. King. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. And life's most per persistent and urgent question is this, what are you doing for others? On this day, as we remember this great leader and man of God, that question is more pertinent than ever. And I hope that each of us has an answer that satisfies not only our own spirits, but the moral arc of the universe. God bless you. Thank you, Chief Campbell. I will now call upon Stephen Mullins.
35 years ago, in January of 1986, the West Haven Black Coalition, under the leadership of its founder and president, Carol Brown, celebrated its first annual tribute to the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Martin Luther King Day had just become a national holiday. The tribute took place here at West Haven's first congregational church. And I am proud to say that I was at that first celebration with my mother as an 11 year old fifth grader. Traditionally, this church would be packed with people of different faiths, races, ages, and socioeconomic backgrounds, all together listening to the word of God, singing, praying, and praising the Lord united in keeping Dr. King's dream alive. This year, due to a worldwide pandemic and Mrs. Brown's health situation, we are bringing this celebration to you virtually. Thank you to Mayor Rossi, Commissioner McCarthy, Mr. Esposito, and the City of West Haven for ensuring that the West Haven community has the opportunity to celebrate the life, witness, ministry, and legacy of Dr. King. With the coronavirus, racial unrest, and partisan politics again showing its ugly face. The year 2020 was a hard and trying time for us as a nation. And so far, the first 20 days or so of 2021 have not been much better. But today, we collect collectively call out to God above in prayer and song. Yes, we will get through this. And as cliche as it may sound, yes, we are still all in this together. And yes, we as a people shall overcome. Thank you, Stephen Mullins. We will now have remarks from the founder of the West Haven Black Coalition and the uh, perennial host of the celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King, from Ms. Carol Brown. Good morning, people of God. Due to the issues of pandemic, the West Haven Black Coalition is unable to come together live as we've done over the past 36 years. Today we celebrate, we celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who shared his message with all of us, striving to get us to look at peace, unity, freedom, justice, love. That's what he wanted. The West Haven Black Coalition has tried for 37 years to pull this community together, to unite the people of West Haven. However, the pandemic has taken over and we hope to be back with you in 2022 with another unifying crowd of 500. We, wanna, we want you to join us on Sunday, January 9th, 2022, as we all unite at the Dr. King Tribute, which will be the 37th year. Due to the modern technology, Louis Fazito and Reverend Carl Howard, I'd like to thank you for pulling this event together. I've been sick for several months, and because of that, I was not able to do what I normally do, but would like to thank all of you for remembering me during my convalescent time. I'm thanking you for the flowers, the cards, the calls, the visits. It meant a lot. And my family thanks you for remembering us 
doing our grieving of the loss of Teddy's brother. This is a time of year that I cherish because I loved Dr. King and I loved the message. Well, we're not gone. We're not gone for good. We know that this tribute is going to take place next year, February 9th, I'm sorry, January 9th, 2022, and we're going to encourage the city to join us in putting that on again next year. We want to encourage you to always come out to the King Tribute. I may not be there today, but I'm there in spirit. I'm there in heart. We thank you for your many years of support. We thank the First Congregational Church and Reverend Carl Howard. And you know, Louis Vizito, who is our Chief of Staff for the city, I thank you for virtually pulling this program together. To all of you, Happy New Year, and we look forward to seeing you next year. I want to leave you with words I live every day by, in my home, in my community, in my church. In unity there is strength. Together we stand, divided we fall. I thank you all, and I pray all of you to stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you, Carol. I'm going to call upon Joshua Ofer Atta. He's a senior from West Haven High School. He will be reading Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Joshua? I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day the valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And in the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall be see, will, shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out a mountain, the mountain of despair, and a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to church, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all God's children will be able to sing with a new meeting, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, O D I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. Up from every mountainside, let freedom reign. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the propitious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening allegations of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But no, but not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountains of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountains of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from the hills and molehills of Mes Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring it from every village and every hamlet, for every state and every city. We will be able to speed up the day when all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholic will be able to join hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last. Thank you, Joshua. I'm going to call upon Carl, uh, Reverend Carl Howard again for his remarks before we do the benediction.
to Senator Blumenthal, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beiswitz, Mayor Rossi, City Council, persons and friends, family, and the great church family here at First Congregational Church of West Haven, my church, and to my dear friend, Carol E. Brown, and my wonderful wife, Belinda, and to all who are hearing me this day, and those who love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, greetings. Today we are here to give honor to the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. Honoring Dr. King only in words, in my opinion, is just not enough. Today, more than ever, we need more than just emphasizing the words of Dr. King. We need to commit the actions of Dr. King to our actions. We need the tenacity of Dr. King. I dare say we even need the fierceness and the fearlessness of Dr. King. Dr. King should be known for more than his dream speech of 1963, though he was instrumental in the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voter Rights Act of 1965. Dr. King should be known as the warrior of who he was. Dr. King was at war with the blatant discriminatory practices of injustice, inequality, and oppressive economic disparity and in that, he called out America because he saw the hypocrisy of what was going on. Dr. King stated two weeks before he was assassinated on March the 18th, 1968, in his speech at the Bishop Charles Mason's Temple in the Church of God in support of the Memphis sanitation workers, Dr. King says the following, if America does not use her vast resources of wealth to end poverty and make it possible for all of God's children to have the basic necessities of life, she too will go to hell. See, Dr. King did not stay static. Dr. King was progressive in thinking. Dr. King was pragmatic in his actions. And this is why we too must be pragmatic in our efforts. We must be deft in how we're going to engage systems of power and structures of power, but not at the expense of us losing our souls and compromising our core beliefs in trying to have unity with others. Our being pragmatic means we must come to grips with the very fact that the things that Dr. King did yesterday may not work for us today. Therefore, I respectfully but sadly state that if we are attempting to get change, if we are attempting to appeal to the humanity of people as Dr. King previously did, this, in my opinion, may be a non-starter. It may be a losing strategy even before we start. We are now in 2021. Look around you at all the chaos and the turmoil of our day. And if you still think that it is the best strategy for us to engage powers and structures by singing, we shall overcome and holding hands and marching down the street, then my God, God bless you. With this stated, we must not be afraid to seek the common ground and the common unity with others in our struggle. But God has not called us to be Christian suckers in the process of going along to get along with those evildoers. May we have the courage and the passion to stand in unity with each other when and if possible. But even if we must stand alone in our struggle, let us embrace the challenges in the spirit of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., America's warrior. Grace and peace. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Howard. That was very moving also. I'm going to call upon Ashley James now to come up 
and she will be singing We Shall Overcome. Ashley? Deep in my heart, I do believe that one day we'll all be free. One day we'll all be free. I may not know just when it will be, but one day we'll all be free. One day we'll all be free. One day we'll all. Hold on, my brother, give me your hand. One day we'll all be free. One day we'll all be free. One day we'll all be free. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. Oh, we'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. That we shall overcome someday. Oh, we are not afraid. We are not afraid. We are not afraid to. That we shall overcome someday. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. To believe that one day we'll all be free, one day we'll all be free, we shall overcome someday. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Very moving song. Well, I will now call upon the Reverend Howard to come and give us the benediction. The prayer this day is that your hearts will be filled with joy and with hope. 
that the words that you've heard this day and the life that we are all here to celebrate, the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. has been, continues, and will always be a source of inspiration for all of us. As we leave this place, but not God's presence, let us walk in a spirit of love. Let us walk in a spirit of unity. Let us seek to find unity when we're able, but let us have the courage and strength to stand when we must. That our God will be with us, that our God will continually keep us, that God's grace and favor will shine upon us, that we will walk in the spirit of unity and harmony, knowing that our love for each other is what Christ, our King, asks that we show to each other. Blessings to stay to all. May God bless you and your families. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Reverend Howard. That concludes today's event. I want to thank you all for uh, helping us celebrate this, this occasion. And hopefully, we will see you all in person next year. Thank you all. God bless and be safe. <laughs>